Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel um, and welcome back to me, I'm back off holiday so my apologies for uh, a couple of weeks of no videos uh, but I'm back, I have lots of footage to uh, bring to you, I've got more cameras uh, that I need to uh, showcase with you um, but before all that, a bit of a change of uh, pattern for me uh, up until now I've focused on film photography um, but I do take digital photographs as well uh, and I very much enjoy it uh, and so I thought I'd do a little piece on a, on a digital project that I did whilst I was away and that's the uh, subject of long exposure so let's take a look I suppose the first question we need to ask ourselves is why we would consider using um, long exposure photography in the first place. And the simple answer is that we would like to perhaps convey the passing of time. Under normal circumstances, we open a camera shutter for just a fraction of a second. And we do this because we're looking to capture a particular moment in time. And a camera is designed to just require uh, literally a brief uh, look at that uh, scene in order to, to convey that. However, um, if in, we have very low light conditions, so for instance the light coming from stars, because it's so uh, fine and little, we uh, have to open the shutter for much, much longer in order for the camera to actually register um, that image uh, at all. Another reason uh, we might uh, look to do it is to convey the passing of time as I said so for instance the light trails left by a passing vehicle at night uh, gives a nice sort of ethereal image as does uh, in daylight looking at moving water the effect uh, that a long exposure um, has on the water uh, again gives an almost sort of uh, magical look to the scene there are a few other examples but it's this final one with moving water that I want to take a look at in this video. So to take long exposure photographs, there's a couple of things that we are going to uh, need, obviously, apart from a camera. <laughs> um, the first thing is what's known as an intervalometer. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It goes without saying that because the camera is um, having the shutter open for a long time, <clears throat> you don't want to be moving the camera at all, obviously, because any nudge, any slight movement is going to show up in your image. So a remote uh, shutter release is going to be essential. Um, but an intervalometer can actually do much more than that. Um, it's basically a device that plugs into a, a camera and controls how often, how long, and how many shots are taken. Um, and obviously in this case, uh, I'm just using it as a remote shutter release, but if I wanted to, I could set the time of that release on there. And rather than me having to sit and hold the button, I just press it once and it will open the shutter and uh, leave it open for the time that I have decided. Um, but yeah, this is quite a um, <clears throat> cheap one. Um, there's often sort of you know cheap generic brands for uh, that will fit your camera, um, and uh, you know there's no need to spend an awful lot of money on an intervalometer. Um, but like I say, at the very least, get a remote shutter. Just make sure that if you are getting one of these, that you kept the correct lead that plugs into this, obviously, but that this end, this plug, is correct for your uh, make and model. Of camera. So the other thing we're going to need is um, a means of reducing the amount of light entering the lens. If we're taking long exposure uh, photographs at night, such as star trails or light trails, something like that, obviously there's very little ambient light around and it's not an issue. But because we're going to be taking these photographs during the day, we need to effectively uh, reduce the amount of light getting into the lens. Because if we don't and we have the shutter open for, let's say, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, all we're going to get is a white image, certainly a very overexposed image. Uh, so what we need is one of these. This is an ND filter or a neutral density filter. And I suppose the best way to describe it is like sunglasses for your lens. But whereas a sunglasses will often change the color of the light, this doesn't. This just reduces the amount of light coming in, hence the term neutral. 
Now, neutral density uh, lenses come in different strengths, if you like, um, or different darkness levels, I suppose is the way of putting it. Uh, and they usually have a uh, number um, on the side of the uh, lens to indicate it. Now, unfortunately, there are different um, systems of numbers in operation. Um, and so um, you have to sort of like work out what, uh, you know, what system your, the, the lens manufacturer of your lens is, is, uh, is making or your filter is making rather. What I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description to a rather good website with a nice handy table that lists them all out. But basically, um, if you think of it as sort of stops of light, um, uh, stops of reduction um, is probably the best way of putting it. So zero is no filter at all, you know, clear. Um, and then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, which is obviously each one of those is a step. But my uh, particular lens here uses a different system. Mine uses, um, I don't know if that's focusing, is it there? There we go. Um, I don't know if you can read that okay. Mine is um, using a different number system. So I've got ND1000 on here. Um, that's basically uh, 10 stops. So quite a severe reduction. In other words, I can take long exposures with this in bright sunlight and um, uh, this will actually counteract that and allow me to um, reduce the amount of light getting into the lens and therefore not getting an overexposed shot. Um, but yeah, do look at the, the table and uh, you can read more about ND filters in that. Um, but yes, definitely gonna need some something like that as well. Uh, finally, the last thing we're going to need is a tripod because as I said to you, we don't want our camera um, uh, being moved anyway. We want to be sort of uh, holding it still as possible. Uh, so any um, tripod that is suitable for your camera, whether it be small or large or whatever, doesn't matter. So the last thing we need then is some water. Whilst in Ireland, I travelled to the Paris Court waterfall, which is the tallest waterfall in Ireland. A um, bit of a tourist spot, but you know, great opportunity to uh, take some of these pictures. Managed to do a little bit of filming whilst I was there. Um, basically, you'll notice I experiment a little bit with exposure settings, um, but uh, just varying the shots and having a bit of a play and generally a good time. Be warned that the longer you leave the shutter open, the more information your camera has to process. And so sometimes you'll be left quite a while whilst uh, it's rendering before you can actually look at your image. <clears throat> Obviously these shots can be done with film as well, but you'll have to wait for them to be developed before you can actually see your results. So let's have, have a look.
And here are the results. Not all of these are long exposure shots, but I thought you might like to see them anyway. Thank you once again for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. Take care.